I grew up in southeast Missouri. And I grew up within a 10-mile radius of five state parks. Silver Mines, Johnson Shut-Ins, Mill Stream Gardens, Tom Sock, and Elephant Rocks. This is an aerial view of a portion of Elephant Rocks in southeast Missouri. Here are a few other snapshots of that location. It's a beautiful part of the country. This is one of my favorite places on earth. It's a place where I have contemplated many major life decisions. You cannot get here without going through there. I remember as a child first hearing this passage about the narrow gate, and that was the image that came to my mind, that place in the narrow rock where you walk through to get to this beautiful landscape. Enter through the narrow gate. I want to focus on verses 13 and 14. But first, just a little bit of context. This portion of chapter 7 is the tail end of the Sermon on the Mount. And Matthew's Jesus is a wisdom teacher, and he is outlining in these chapters the way for ethical living. Don't store up treasure. Don't judge your neighbor. Reconcile your broken relationships. Be pure of heart. Do unto others. These chapters are not about a reality beyond the here and now. These chapters are about how to live here and now. They're not about what you believe. They're about how you live. So what exactly is going on in verses 13 and 14 with this narrow gate. The gospel writer is playing upon one of the oldest analogies known to humankind. This idea that life is a journey. Odysseus in the Iliad, Jacob in Genesis, Christian in Pilgrim's Progress, I cannot say Pilgrim's Progress without Dr. John Imbler coming to my mind. <laughs> Life is a journey. And this is an idea that's very familiar in the Hebrew text as well. There's a like passage in Psalm chapter 1. There's a like passage in the 21st chapter in Jeremiah, in the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy. It's also an idea that's familiar in the Qumran text and in the Didache. This whole idea that life is a journey, and you have two choices. You can choose the wide and the easy way that leads to destruction, or you can choose the hard and narrow way that leads to life. I've wrestled with this text a lot, particularly in the last week as I was preparing to come and share with you. And for me, there are three standout items to raise from these two verses. Here are my takeaways. The very first thing that you have to take away when you read verses 13 and 14 is that this Entering through the narrow gate has to be a conscious choice. It's a turning away from what's known, what's familiar, the status quo. Not flying on autopilot. If you asked me to list my top three favorite movies, one of those movies would be The Matrix. 
I love that movie. And the pinnacle of the movie for me is the point at which Neo meets up with Morpheus for the very first time, and they have this conversation in which Morpheus offers to Neo two choices. You can choose the red pill, or you can choose the blue pill. If you take the blue pill, you go back to autopilot. You get to cruise. But if you choose the red pill, you will be introduced to a new reality. The truth, I believe, is how he frames it. This movie is a remake of Plato's Allegory of the Cave, and it's really capitalizing on this Socratic idea of sleepwalking through life. If you enter through the narrow gate, there is no sleepwalking. There is no autopilot. Entering through the narrow gate requires a conscious choice. Second takeaway. If you enter through the narrow gate, it tells us, if you find it, it means that it's probably a pretty lonely place, and I would say it means sometimes we have to walk alone. I love my family. I limit my time with my family. <laughs> Spent a little time with them earlier this year, and we had a conversation, shall we say, about a particular family practice in which I said to them, I understand, but I am not participating. I am not joining in that practice. And one of my sisters, she shook her head and she said, Mimi, for once, could you just keep your head down and go along? <laughs> Can you just keep your head down and go along? You know that keeping our head down and going along, that's the autopilot. That's the blue pill. If we choose to enter through the narrow gate, it is a conscious choice. We have to be willing to even step away from people we love and walk alone. One of the most important texts I've ever read was The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. That, get, that book was gifted to me by Mindy McGarris Sharp when I started my thesis writing here at Phillips. And the context of the book is really helping you to understand why you generate your own creative resistance, why you are your own worst enemy. And really, the book is about how do you overcome yourself? Now, he doesn't use this metaphor of two paths, but he does say that when you choose to learn, to grow, to transform, to be your best self, you have to leave people behind sometimes. And that is hard. If we enter through the narrow gate, it's probably going to be lonely. We may have to walk alone at least some of the time. Third takeaway for me. It is a narrow gate. That means we can't take a lot of baggage with us. And there are all kinds of ways that we could talk about ba baggage, but I want to think about baggage in terms of bitterness, resentment, anger. We cannot live according to the Sermon on the Mount. We cannot enter through the narrow gate if we are hanging on to that kind of baggage. I do want to say just a word about anger. You all probably are familiar with the story that showed up in the news a couple of weeks ago after Ellen DeGeneres sat with George W. Bush, Bush at a Dallas Cowboys game. And there were all kinds of things on social media, all kinds of articles were written about that event both good and bad, but I was particularly enamored with one article that I read by a young man of color by the name of L.Z. Granderson. And he was talking about there is a place for anger. Anger can actually be a positive and helpful tool, and sometimes anger can spark a movement. But anger should never order 
that movement's steps. When I read that, I, I jotted that down. It can start the movement, but it shouldn't order its steps. I am not saying that we are never going to experience some bitterness and anger and resentment in life. We are. But if we're walking through the narrow gate, it cannot order our steps. One of my greatest spiritual teachers is my son. When he was in the fourth grade, he was gifted one Christmas with Mario Brothers. Loved that game. I didn't see him for days. <laughs> so I remember one evening in, I was standing in our kitchen. I still remember the green and orange linoleum floor in the kitchen. And he comes in and he is absolutely elated because he has just mastered level one. And he is so excited. And so we had a, a moment of celebration and he heads off to his room. And I swear to you, it wasn't 30 minutes later and he was back. And this time he was devastated. And it's like, you're not going to believe this. Level one. I got it. I mastered it. And now I'm in level two and there's, there's all this new stuff. There's all these new challenges. And of course, I'm commiserating and acknowledging that yes, indeed, this is, this is how it is. And all of a sudden, the expression on his face changed and he looked at me and he put his hands on his hips and he said, you mean to tell me that we can't get better unless things get harder? Yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> and I have a confession to make. That's how I want life to be. I want to work really, really hard, and then I want things to get easier. Can you relate? What if we lived life as if it was a Mario Brothers video game? And what if we recognized that every time we mastered a level, it was so that we got better and went to the next one. What if we stopped wanting things to be easy? What if we accepted that getting harder is part of it? That is the narrow gate. You know, the truth is, every time I want life to be easy, that's the wide way leads to destruction. If we're going to go through this narrow gate, it has to be a conscious choice. We have to be willing to walk alone sometimes. And we have to leave some baggage behind. There's one more thing I want to talk about related to this verse. It ends with this prediction that few will find it. Well, that's rather harsh, don't you think? Kind of negative? Rather elitist? Well, I would say that if all we read were verses 13 and 14, we could draw that conclusion. But clearly in verse 7, Jesus says, those who seek, find. So it's not that it can't be found. It's that often we don't choose it. We don't seek it. Because it is a very, very hard choice. And it has consequences. We have to leave things behind. We have to leave people behind. We are being beckoned to enter through the narrow gate. And just as Jake discovered, we cannot get better unless life gets harder. but we have a great example leading our way. Let us all be willing to walk Jesus' ethical, narrow way through the gate. And all of God's people said,